And then we have a few remarks on security. Um, in the case of security, we need isolation so that when an application runs, other applications may not uh, uh, spy on it and find out features of it so that uh, and when Lily runs that chemistry calculations, another commercial company cannot come along and find out what, which chemistry the chemical Lily is looking at. And there are other more extreme examples of privacy. Um, and that requires isolation of the network and the CPU and the storage level. Obviously, there's some important identity uh, um, and access management issues, authentication and authorization. And we need to have policies. There are a lot of actual and important legal issues, which tend to be different in different countries. Some countries have rules that you cannot run their data in other countries, so that uh, it sort of uh, runs counter to this global, this view of a cloud accessing requests glo globally. Because <coughs> uh, some of those applications may only be runnable in the same country where the data comes from. Um, so here are some remarks on actually how we uh, um, do the, the security models. Um, the guest virtual machines are never trusted. The hypervisor and the root OS are, tr are isolated and trusted. We have network isolation. We filter packets at the network edge to make sure that they're valid and not uh, malicious. We isolate the fabric controllers. We use SSL for any for any uh, traffic and things which are secrets. We use encrypted storage for. Here we have the uh, various um, types of entities uh, with what they are dealing with and the authorization mechanisms. So customers have their favorite ID on Windows. It's Live ID on Google. It will be your Google your Google Plus login. And um, then there is obviously, you get your key, which allows you to, to access your storage and things like that. 